Beyond Meat is the best performing stock of 2019. Really, when it comes to Beyond Meat and other manufacturers, they have their role. The $12 billion market cap or wherever it is this morning, an unbelievable outcome so far, right, in a very quick period of time. It's still overvalued. Guess what? That tells you absolutely nothing about what the share price is going to do. On its first trading day in May 2019, the stock price soared 163%. It was the best performance for an IPO in nearly two decades. By September 2019, the stock was up more than 500%. And at one point in 2019, it was up more than 850%. At that point, the stock price made Beyond Meat bigger than 25% of companies in the S&P 500. Here's how Beyond Meat became 2019's hottest stock. First, let's talk about how IPOs work, starting with Beyond Meat. The plant-based meat producer started trading on the public market in May 2019. Wall Street expected Beyond Meat shares to price between $19 to $21. But by the end of its first trading day, it was selling for $65 a share. How did that happen? When it comes to pricing stocks, an initial public offering or an IPO valuation works a bit differently from a regular stock valuation. Companies trading on the stock market are publicly traded, meaning shareholders who purchase the company's stock technically own the company. The Securities and Exchange Commission requires public companies to report their earnings and explain their financial accounting to investors and potential shareholders. Analysts use this public information to value the stock. A private company, meanwhile, does not have to disclose any financial information to the SEC, which means analysts have to look at other factors for an IPO valuation. Companies planning an initial public offering fill out a registration form with the SEC called the S-1. Analysts can look to the S-1 for industry and company overview, selected financial documents, and the future outlook. If there are similar companies that are already public, analysts will look at those companies' financials for guidance on where the company should be valued. A company's S-1, industry data, and financials of competitors should be enough information for a fair valuation of a stock. This is Matthew Spiegel. He's a finance professor at Yale's Business School. The problem that everybody has is nobody has sort of a universal information database, right? So you're, you're flying blind to some degree, right? You have the financials uh, that the firms put out, but the financials for an IPO tend to be a little juiced up in the prior years. According to Spiegel, it all comes down to information miracle of the stock market or the bond market or any other market is that market prices aggregate all that information. And that's how we wind up with market clearing. Well, what does that mean in an IPO? Well, there are going to be cases where, you know, I have some good news. So I think the stock is worth a little more than the financials would normally indicate. And so I go into the market with that idea. But occasionally, it could turn out everyone else has a little bit of information, too, that also indicates that the stock is worth a little bit more than the financials indicate. And so we all go in, and suddenly it turns out everybody's got good news, right? Very rare, but it happens. And suddenly, you have an 800% increase. The alternative meat industry is expected to become a $140 billion industry in the next decade. Today, nearly 98% of meat alternative buyers also purchase real meat. Beyond Meat was the first plant-based meat producer to go public. That meant two things. It was hard for analysts to compare it with other public companies, and demand for the stock was high, because if investors wanted to play the industry, they had to buy the stock. RJ Hadavi is a consumer strategist for Morningstar. He covers restaurant stocks like Tim Hortons and McDonald's. I think it's been very difficult to replicate the Beyond Meat story. This was a, something of a, a lightning in the bottle scenario where, uh, you know, this has been a, a category uh, protein uh, within the consumer packaged good industry that really hadn't seen a lot of innovation. Um, yeah, clearly there's a demand for alternative proteins. To be honest, I think Beyond Meat's done a great job with the branding there. So you had a perfect intersection of uh, disruption and brand management. Um, and I think that's really what led to the uh, stock price appreciation. Bernstein analyst Alexia Howard raised her price target for the stock in her July 2019 note, saying, quote, We continue to expect significant growth potential in the plant-based meat category and believe that Beyond Meat is well-positioned as one of the front runners. 
In 2018, Beyond Meat was having trouble keeping up with demand for its burgers and sausages. That caused the company to hit the pause button on new products and partnerships. So when the company recently opened a new factory in Columbia, Missouri, that tripled its production capability, driving the stock price even more. Another thing that helped, the rest of Beyond Meat's potential rivals were slow to come up with alternative meat products. Now, typically what happens in the CPG space is you do have one leader, but it's very quick for other players to replicate that. And I think that's been the difference in this case, where it's taken a little bit longer for some of the existing players and the incumbents in the market uh, to, to catch up in terms of the innovation. As more traditional food companies get into the same business as Beyond Meat, it should help analysts and investors price its stock. And one more reason behind Beyond Meat's epic stock run, it was making investors a lot of money, and people hate missing out. With the stock up more than 850% at one point, investors rushed to get in on the stock. Kathleen Smith, Renaissance Capital Principal and the manager of the IPO ETF, says that it's part of a greater IPO trend. It's been better than uh, the return on the S&P 500, so it's been a very strong period of time for returns in the IPO market. Some people look at the IPO market and they're interested in activities or the other side of the equation. What, what do issuers look at? They want to see a lot of activity. The underwriters want to see that too. You know, so far this year, there have been over 100 IPOs done and they've raised 40 some billion. That is pretty strong compared to where it's been historically. Rival Impossible Foods has plans to go public in the future. Analysts say that could hurt Beyond Meat's control of the plant-based meat alternative industry in the long term. Beyond Meat is currently valued at $9 billion. At $2 billion, Impossible Foods is not far behind. And when Impossible Foods does go public and potentially take some market share from Beyond Meat, whether in the grocery store aisle or in fast food chains, it will essentially have doubled the number of alternative meat companies in the public markets. That gives investors much more information with which they'd be able to use to value both companies. It would make it difficult for Impossible to trade a multiple that's that different from Beyond Meat because the, these multiples, these valuations are going to be connected. The same thing happened with Uber and Lyft. Their valuations are related. They don't diverge too much from each other. Beyond Meat may have been the hottest IPO of 2019, but it was Uber, Lyft, and WeWork that were the most anticipated. Kathleen Smith says investors will be comparing WeWork's IPO valuation to the IPOs of Uber and Lyft. We companies will be the second largest underwritten IPO after Uber, which raised $8.1 billion exactly. The issue really is investors who invested in Uber and Lyft are underwater, uh, the trading below the IPO price. So that kind of has an impact on we companies and investor appetite for this kind of IPO. After closely watched IPOs, Uber and Lyft began to disappoint investors. It was a much different story than what happened with Beyond Meat. We've had many IPOs since the Uber and Lyft IPOs, and many of them have done well. I look at what's happening with we companies as just the correction that needs to happen with companies that have very high growth but lots of losses that investors are wanting to be very cautious about the quality of the companies.